All right. If you guys remember last time, uh, you guys were stuck in the year 1969, and uh, you're trying to chase a Romulan back to his uh, his hideout where you found him uh, basically building a replica of Soviet bomber around his uh, his shuttle. Um, you were able to wound the Romulan, and you were transported. Uh, to a ship that looks very far advanced than the technology you are used to. Uh, you guys find yourself on the transporter pad. When someone speaks up from, uh, you know, from behind a control panel. Welcome to the time ship mallet. Welcome to the future. I'm Lieutenant Commander Keith. I'm sure you have a lot of questions. Indeed. And first, um, what year is it? You are in the year 2899. Wonderful. Uh, is there a reason why you were pulled from our time? Other than to hunt a Romulan down. That is a uh, very complicated answer, Captain. I'm just trying to get my uh, facts straight here. I have a whole list of bullet points, and I'm like, which one? Oh, okay. I think I was... Uh, what was your question, Captain? Uh, the reason why we were pulled here... From our own time, other than to hunt a Romulan. There is, we tracked a, an event from your timeline that seems to have changed the course of history. From our perspective, whatever happened in the past has caused the Federation to not exist. In fact, humanity does not exist. We are of one alternate timeline that was created from the events. All of which has been traced back to that event in 1969. So the Federation still no longer exists and we failed? The issue that now exists is that the person you were tracking seems to have escaped your attempt to capture him. And we believe that he may have attempted again to destroy humanity. However, we are unsure of where in the timeline they have gone. I believe... Commander Casey here can comment on that, but he disappeared in some sort of um, vortex just as Commander Casey shot him. So at least for at that moment in time, he was injured. Uh, 
uh, the grass pipes up. So Lieutenant Commander Keith, was it? That is correct, Commander. If the Federation doesn't exist in this timeline, what organization are you with? See, the Federation does exist, or shall I say, did exist. Hold on, I have, I have the reason. Our temporal shielding has allowed us to still exist. However, we are starting to run low on supplies, and it is becoming increasingly difficult to keep our temporal shields up. Should those shields fail, we also will cease to exist. We took a calculated risk and tried basically a last-ditch effort to try to avoid the destruction of the Federation, at least in our reality. Understandable. And so we're in a sort of temporal bubble. But it's an apt analogy, Commander. Interesting. Are you able to track this Romulan um, where he went to next? Unfortunately, no. We are not able to determine where in the timeline he jumped to after your encounter with him. So we're sure that the pivotal pivotal events or a divergence happens in 1969. At least that is when this Romulan tried to destroy the timeline in the first attempt. So it's possible that he could have jumped to the same year at a slightly different time or a, a new time completely, a completely different event. That is correct. He could have gone a few days into the future, a few days into the past. He could have gone thousands of years into the future or into the past. Do you have means of recording the events of this new timeline? We do have minimal systems able to monitor the timeline. But the further into the past we go, the more difficult it is to determine a good point in which we could attempt to stop this agent. Could we um, scan the timeline to figure out another point of divergence? Or timeline changed? Could we attempt to just go back and stop him again? With what we need? I will give you asset access to our computer sh systems. Come, follow me. I 
and he uh, will motion towards the door. Grass is interested, so the grass will follow. Okay, I'll go along as well. All right, uh, you follow Lieutenant Commander Keith through the ship, and um, you could definitely tell that the the ship is made of materials that you're unfamiliar with, powered with technology that looks really advanced. Um, however, some of the telltale signs that you would recognize is um, you could definitely tell that the ship is running running on minimal power. Um, several systems that you think would be on are turned off. Um, you could tell that the life support has been set on minimal levels. The gravity is set on minimum, if not off entirely in certain sections. They are definitely in a power save mode. Um, he eventually leads you um, into a lab um, that seems to be fully powered as he enters it. This is where we monitor the timeline and attempt to repair any damage to it. If you had any specific time frames in mind, Captain, you could access the uh, monitoring here, any points to a console. I believe Commander Casey is probably the most informed on Earth's history. He might be able to easily more find her with the help with the rest of the crew to figure out when, you know, a divergence in the timeline could have happened that would cause all of this. I'm sure there are many. I'm no historian, but I, I'll certainly give it a shot, Captain. All right, so Casey, okay, so you stick up to the computer. Um, what are you searching for? Um, so I think I missed some of it, but it, I'm uh, looking for like uh, any any unusual like events, right? Like glossing over like important historical events. I guess seeing if there's anything jumping out for uh, be a divergence from what I would know as history. All right. Um, we'll go ahead and go reason and probably command. Hey, yes, I have a ten. <laughs> let me let me see if command is the right one for this. Because it's trying to match it against history, so I'm trying to think command would be it. Commander Khan, I would imagine. Would I be able to make a case for insight? <laughs> would improve my score a little bit, but... I could probably use insight. Yeah, I think it's going to be command, though. Sounds good. Uh, what was the difficulty, sorry? Um, Gave one. <laughs> we'll go, uh, we'll go, no, I didn't. Uh, we'll go difficulty of 
to complication range three. Okay. Um... Don't have any momentum. Very cool. Don't think any of my focuses apply. Uh, could I, would observation work since I'm trying to notice a change? Like as I'm browsing through, or uh, uh probably not. Right. Uh, do one threat for an extra dice. Made it. I'm just typing it up. It is probably confusing, Casey, but it is definitely meant to be. Okay. Um, I'm not really sure how to explain this in roleplay, so I think I'm going to post it, if that's okay with you, Gio. <laughs> Well, uh, I would like you to make the attempt because I think uh, it would be hilarious to try to do this in character because you're not a scientist. Right. Okay, I get you. Get what you're putting down. Uh, well, I've taken a look here, just a quick uh, glance, Captain, and a number of these events don't seem to add up to me. Um, a number of them are different, but. The divergences uh, appear to be from entirely different universes, almost. Um, it's as if uh, multiple realities are combining into one, potentially. And we're getting into science officer territory, I suppose. Do, do you mind if I review, review that data? Of course, uh, Lieutenant. Thank you, Commander. All right, I will post it. <laughs> oh, I did for you. It did. Awesome. So, if I'm Understanding this right, they're scanning the full multiverse. Interesting. So, is there a way to tease out which timeline is ours? Mm 
Uh, give me a uh, reason science difficulty two. Gain a momentum. Nice. Oh, so in our time timeline, the Romulan succeeds in his first attempt to destroy the Earth in 1969. So I guess where we want to be is in 1969. Um. But we thwarted that attempt, did we not? I did give him a pretty bad wound. Uh, Commander Keith will speak up. You have successfully foiled the Romulans' attempt to destroy Earth in our timeline. Or I should say in our universe. Pardon me, I only got a C plus in temporal mechanics. A great deal of studying. So why is there no So why does not the Federation doesn't exist in this timeline? What was that, Captain? I thought you said the Federation does not exist in this timeline. It no longer exists in this timeline. Due to our temporal shielding, we were able to withstand the effects of the temporal shift. Albeit temporarily. We can only exist inside this time ship. If we step out of the time ship, we would disappear from existence. If our shields fail, we would disappear from existence. We were fortunate enough to have been on a mission when this happened. So the grass uh, will speak up and say, I believe Lieutenant, Lieutenant Nadan is correct. Uh, based on my understanding of temporal mechanics, the only way to stop this might be to go back before the divergence took place and, well, potentially cut the Romulan off at the very source, making sure that 
he doesn't affect anything in the timeline, or at least keeping the damage to a minimum. If if we were to find out where he first entered the past and catch him then, wouldn't that undo all of the damage he's done? Uh, GM, based on my, uh, I guess, focus and temporal mechanics, would I know if something like that would work? Sorry, I had to find your name so I could type you something. No worries. One second, I'm getting a phone call. Uh, so the grass will say, "Yeah, no, I, I believe it would if if we can track the Romulan down to where they emerged, whether it's in 1969 or thereabouts. We should be able to isolate the damage they were able to do to our timeline and hopefully set things back." the way they should be. Do we know the point of origin? That would be a roll. Uh, what would the roll be? Uh, be reason science difficulty of three. Hmm. Well, Nidan, that would be you or me. Um, my reason science is 14, and I have a focus in temporal mechanics. I know yours is a little higher. Yeah, but I don't have the focus, so... I think okay. mine's 17, but I don't have the focus. Uh... Could you assist? Yeah, I'm happy to assist there. All righty. Let's give it a shot. This seems pretty important. So um, I'll burn a momentum and then uh, I'll give you two threat just to make sure we get it. Do you enjoy threat? <laughs> Get some momentum back. I'm assuming you don't have a reroll the grass, cautious or something. Uh, no, I switched it to bold command, so no. Okay, cool. Uh, you guys get two momentum out of it.
Interesting. According to what I'm seeing here, looks like the Romulan well, seems to have come out of some sort of uh, temporal anomaly in what looks like the year 1947 in this timeline. So what was he doing for 22 years? No wonder catching him in 1969 didn't uh, solve the issue. Yeah. Well, something tells me we'll find out. I would assume that the bomber that uh, he was building and presumably the nuclear device that might have taken a while to gather. Or laid out other pieces for if something were to happen to him that would cause the, to ensure that the Federation was never founded. Certain seeds of destruction for the human race. Sort of like temporal booby traps almost. It's interesting. Sounds like we need to start there. I am assuming, Commander Keith, that um, our current attire is not packable during that time period. I'm sure we could have the quartermaster make you up a an appropriate attire for the year in question. However, Captain, we seem to only have power enough for one more journey. We'll be able to send you there and retrieve you, but it will basically eat up all of our remaining power reserves. So it's a one-way chip no matter what. If this works the way I think it does, you capturing this Romulan agent in the past should restore our timeline. And if that is the case, we should be able to have the infrastructure in place to refuel our vessel. And then we'd, we would be able to then return you back to your universe. Very well. GM, is there any equipment that they'll give us besides a tire? Depends what you ask for. Scanning equipment, maybe a couple of phasers. Uh, scanning equipment will be fine. Uh, they could met. Um, I'll tell you what. If you give me um, two momentum, you can pretty much get whatever equipment you need from the replicators. That is equivalent to your time frame. Obviously, they have rules of their temporal stuff, giving advanced technology to the past. 
but they'll be able to rec replicate anything you need from your time frame. Sounds like a good deal. <laughs> so yeah, so you could get communicators, you could get tricorders, phasers. I'm just thinking mostly standard equipment stuff that we can also conceal, so probably type ones. Because we can hide those easily. Any grenades or anything? No. <laughs> he said anything for two momentum, and those are concealable. I'm kidding. Sorry, I'm not trying to break the game. I mean, I'll take threat for for those. <laughs> so, um, multi, so engineering tri corner and multi tool. Yeah. Yeah, time time is not really a factor because you're literally on a time ship. So the past technically is not going anywhere. Uh, sorry, I might have missed what exactly is the year we're going to. Or are we going back to 1969? Or... 47. 47, okay. Where it is believed that the Romulan first um, got to Earth in this timeline. Right. Uh, so the the grass for his uh, clothing is going to select a nice uh, suit, tie, hat. You know, kind of the whole nine yards for the for the forties. So are you guys just bringing the standard equipment? Tricorders, Type 1s, yeah. tri, uh, trans communicators, tricorders, phasers. Uh, Chief wanted a uh, multi-tool. I would imagine like the stuff we carry the equipment in though is like in a briefcase or appropriate tire type. So it's not to arouse suspicion of carrying a Nice, lovely kid that says Starfleet on it. Yeah, um, maybe a mechanics outfit or, uh, you know, overalls or, you know, jeans or whatever. Yeah, we could give you, uh, some greased up overalls. So I look like, uh, either, you know, some kind of mechanic. Yep. The automobile. So yeah, so he'll replicate you like um, you know, like a a grayish jumpsuit that has a uh, motor oil spilt all over it. You know, pretty not like really dirty, but like you know, it looks worn, but feels new. For my part, I'll uh, request like a um a utility dress style uh dress like kind of the late 40s uh era dress that stops just below the knees type of thing mm -hmm. pretty standard 1940s era women's attire All right, so uh, you're able to gather up all your equipment. Now, Captain, we just need to know where to send you. Do 
your research didn't conclude a spot to beam down to? Commander DeGrasse? Uh, GM, did we get that information? Uh, I'll probably make you roll for that. Try to give you some more momentum. Much appreciated. Um, we'll give you guys a reason and either a science or a con roll. Uh, we'll make this a difficulty one. All righty. Oz, did you roll it? Okay. Uh, I rolled it. Uh, is Nadon still assisting? Yeah. Okay. Great. The Don already knows, but I'll give it to you. I guessed, but my uh, my character has no way of knowing that with her background, so. Uh, neither would mine. <laughs> so uh, DeGrasse is just going to say uh, a place called Roswell. Roswell... New Mexico? Casey, does this mean anything to you? Uh, it's an old Earth tale. Uh, supposedly uh, an alien landed there, but uh, most historians regarded it as merely a conspiracy theory. Nothing of any real value. Perhaps there was some truth to it, after all. Well, it seems as though we're going to find out. Captain, what do you think? Well, it's a start, and let's try and stay out of trouble as best we can. Well, Lieutenant Commander Keith, how do we get back? We'll lead you back down to the transporter room. Let me send the coordinates up to the bridge, and they should be ready with the coordinates by the time we get down there. And he'll relay the coordinates, the temporal coordinates, to uh, the bridge crew. Whenever you are ready, uh, you may follow me.
I believe everything seems to be in order, so... Hmm. Quick question, just to make sure. When we go back, is, uh, is Lieutenant Mendrock here going to look like one of his species or more like a human? Oh, you guys still look human. The, gotcha. from, uh, That's yeah. a, that was a Perfect. human observation. Totally. <laughs> Yeah. Um, in character, though, he'll say the modifications we made prior to sending you to the past the first time will remain intact. Perfect. As you all very much look human still. You know, just Mendrock with a, you know, facial hair where, uh, any tentacles might be. You know, so he has a really thick mustache. Uh, so, are you all ready to go back in time again? I guess. Uh, before we go, um, can I do a quick search for anything related to uh, what Casey pointed out as far as the... Uh, the crash at Roswell. Key figures, location, you know, general history. Give me control command difficulty uh, two. Okay. Uh, would a computer's focus apply since it's a search? Yeah. I'll use a threat. Oof. Um, well, I have bold commands. Can I reroll two or just one? Uh, just one with bold. Okay. Uh, see what happens. Okay. Uh, as well, before I go, just in case this might be useless, like, do I have, like, a, a bag, like, a backpack I'm bringing with me? Uh, someone pointed out that it... Uh, sorry, I think you cut out there. Info you could pull off of the wiki base. Mm. Nice. I think I uh, I think I missed that. Uh, you cut out. Uh, most of the names are unimportant. Um, more the details. Uh, Casey, did you get your question answered? Oh, sorry. I was just like, do I have like a backpack? Uh, did I did I not come through? Uh, yeah, um, some, little... Someone mentioned um, briefcases. So if you needed to carry anything, you could carry it in a briefcase. All right. Just in case this is useful, um, can I get a United States Army Air Forces uniform? Ooh. Like a disguise. 
nothing too high rank, just like a captain or something. Yeah. Awesome. I don't know if anyone else wants to do that route, but I guess it would be. Yeah. I guess Casey would probably be able to know enough to pull off the most impressing or uh, convincing disguise. Yep, uh, yeah, Casey, they replicate you a nice um, World War II style uh, Army, unif Army Air Force uniform, rank of captain. Awesome. Thank you. As well as they'll give you one of those, uh, you know, like the like the big military bags. Okay. Yeah. Duffel bag. Yeah. I think I still have mine sitting around here somewhere. This is, well, non sequitur, but someone in my platoon just got issued their duffel bag and it has, it's marked United States military property. And apparently a few people have gotten that. Somehow Canadian forces has a bunch of U.S. military duffel bags in our, <laughs> in our supply Air chain. Force. They probably, yeah. Yeah. probably got them from a military surplus store. Yeah. It surprised me. Um, any other things you guys want to get? Captain might jump Maybe. on the whole uh, having a military attire on the side, too. Just in case. I have a tool belt to go with my mechanic uniform. Just in case. Yeah, Captain, you'll... You... You'll get the uh, the female version of the uniform. It you know it's like a it's basically like a a dress kind of. Let me see if I could get a picture of it. Uh, so in the meantime, based on his readings, the Ross will say, uh, well, it looks like the news was reported July 8th, 1947. Uh, the crash happens, it looks like a few weeks, maybe three weeks before it was reported. So if we were to go back, well, to the time of the crash, or maybe even slightly before, I would say that we would need to go back sometime mid-June. A little before the crash sounds about right. Uh, question, did anybody, or did they replicate us any uh, period money at all? Uh, you could probably get a few hundred bucks, or, uh, you know, maybe like 50 bucks or so. Okay, sounds good. We're already breaking the law, we're counterfeiting currency. But it's a very believable fake. 
Yeah, from uh, some cat. Yeah, some cash from Tribe Me Voice. Just in case. We might want to have um, counterfeit identification as well. Oh, yeah, yep. True. Well, Captain, I know that uh, we don't want to over-prepare for our mission, so. Do you believe we're ready? Well, we have some peer-to-piece money, some appropriate attire, as well as identification, and Equipment, yet discreet enough that hopefully, you know, it doesn't get left behind. All right, uh, is everything uh, prepared all ready to go? Anything else you guys feel you need? Not, nothing I can think of. All right, uh, you're eventually led back down to the uh, transporter room. Uh, we're all set on our end. Uh, whenever you're ready, please step onto the transporter pad. Step on the pad when anybody else does. Um, with everybody on the pad, should kind of look to Commander Keith. Energize. All right, we'll enter a new scene. Uh, you materialize on the outskirts of a town that's uh, in the middle of desert. Uh, and it is about midday. Sure, I asked for a vehicle. We would be sitting in the desert. No. Just for water. That is true. Uh, GM, how far out from the city does it look like we are? Not that far. Um, you know, probably a few few hundred meters. Okay, yeah, so easily walkable. All right. Grass will... Uh... Well, I guess I'll start walking.
Okay. You'll also. Oh, sorry, Prax. Go ahead. Hopefully, we can procure a vehicle later on. DeGrasse will take some money out of his pocket and ask Casey. Casey, is this enough for a vehicle? Um, I guess you'd count the money. <laughs> yeah. I think we have like 50 bucks a piece or something. Uh, in this time period, that would have been considered a good sum of change. And we should be able to get a, a ride into the city. You guys are walking closer to the city, and one of the things you notice is that it seems to be unusually warm today. Everyone roll me a fitness medicine difficulty one. Um, whoever has the eyes should probably go first. Um, survival for a focus? Yeah. Uh, Casey gets you guys a momentum. The Don and Mendrox don't need no stinking momentum to pass their rolls. Uh, I'll take survival for, for focus. Yep. Hey. <laughs> Just <All right>. made it. <laughs> Oh, that's a full success in my book. Uh, so no point in asking for a focus, because... Sure, it's warm out here. Uh, Captain gets a momentum out of that as well. Uh, but uh, Casey keeps everyone in pretty good physical shape with his... Uh, training drills on the expedition so you you sweat a little bit but it's nothing you guys cannot handle and after a few short moments uh you guys reach the edge of town um, it, it again, it's a it's a pretty smaller town, you know, maybe a few hundred people actually live here. Um, you, you do see many people that are in town in military uniforms. You probably register at least maybe a quarter of the people in the town are wearing military uniforms. Um, so the event on the 8th, right? I don't know. Uh, the reporting is on the 8th. The event took place like three weeks before. Okay. Uh, right. So it uh, looks like a farmer or rancher claimed to see something come down, uh, crash, and then he was able to find the debris, and then the story broke like a couple days later. And how many days, like, we, like, the day before the crash or the day or the night of the crash? Uh, that's a good question. I think we just had, like, a, a day or so before. Uh, GM... Did they tell us exactly what day we would be transported back to? We 
they tried as hard as they could to get you around the date that you said uh, to send them to. So, yeah, according to the Wikipedia page, it looked like the crash took place about mid-June or so. Reported July 8th. If Wikipedia could be trusted, of course. Yeah, that is true. Uh, so you guys are reached out, and what are you guys doing? Well, Captain, it would stand to reason that hopefully we've been transported here before the event took place. I guess we could check local media to see if we're actually before the event took place. And then after that, I might suggest uh, potentially going to the property where the wreckage was found. Well, for before, uh, we could set up near the property, but let's figure out what date it is. First, is there a newspaper stand or? Uh, there's one of those, uh, like newspaper machines, you know, on, along the sidewalks. Those old timey ones, you know, you put the coin in, pull the thing down, pull the paper out. Reach in and get a newspaper. Look at it. Uh, you try to pull the handle and uh, it doesn't open. Um, insert the proper coinage. Give me a uh, control con difficulty one. Get a momentum. Uh, Captain, you expertly work the newspaper uh, machine. Uh, it looks like uh, you've been doing this for years. Uh, what does the date say? I'm sure it's a boring Roswell, New Mexico newspaper from June, whatever, 1947. Let me double check my dates here. Uh, it'll be July 8th. I thought we were going back weeks before the crash. Or the news were remarkable. I spent threat. Damn it. <sighs> Looks like the crash has already happened. Is this the headline that says, uh, you know, RAAF uh, captures flying saucer on ranch in Roswell, Utah? Hold on. I got some dates crossed here.
Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'll put you guys on the... No, this will work. This will work with what I have in mind. Yeah, read eight. But the newspapers will not mention any flying saucers. So there's no crash in July 8th. Right. 1946. Right. A lot of them, uh, a lot of the newspapers are uh, baseball headlines for a sport, for a sport called baseball. Well, this is not good. She hands the newspaper article over to you, Don. What do you make of this? Most likely explanation, uh, the Romulan were after changed the timeline somehow and avoid cra avoided crashing. Mr. Casey, they have some sort of ability to scan for their airspace this, during this time period. Some sort of turn of LIDAR or radar. Uh, radar was in its infant stages at this time, but uh, a large metal object in the air they very well may have been able to detect, uh, detect although not likely identify. And judging by this headline, there is an Air Force base nearby. Um, what do you say for a little adventure in to see if you can't get some log entries um, for the radar for the past three weeks? Might help him point. Um, when our Roman friend entered assuming this uh, is the right period indeed captain In the distance, you kind of hear a commotion. Kind of sounds like, what's that? Did you see that? Oh my god, what was that? I'll go look at what that was. <laughs> Give me a insight security or insight con, diff one. Or let's make this a difficulty two for everybody. Observation for a focus? Yes. Uh, take a threat. I'll spend a momentum. <laughs> the dance engrossed in the newspaper at the time. What is this string of numbers on the sports page supposed to symbolize? Uh, just need the grass and Mendrock to roll. 
Why am I rolling? Uh, insight with security or con difficulty too. Security or con? Oh, team security. Um, let's see who will do it. Yeah. You said difficulty too? Yep. See where I get. Hey, holy cow! Nice. Uh, what's the what's the roll for? Uh, to spot something. Okay. No focuses for that. Wait, I thought I just said no focuses, right? Wait, what is that? That's what happens when you roll critical. Oh, okay. I'm not used to rolling that well, so. Yeah, same thing happened to me. I rolled a crit. Uh, would I be able to discreetly pull up my tricorder and try and scan it? Yeah, I'll give you a complication range 2 to scan. Uh, what would the scan roll be? Uh, diff well, what are you scanning for? Um, just to identify what the meteor is. Or like, yeah. just some basic characteristics about it. Yeah, I see a meteor heading north of the city. It's meant to in the sunlight. Oh, uh, yeah, this will be a controller reason using security or science difficulty two complication two. Uh, for uh, Casey. Okay, uh, take one threat. Damn, almost had the complication. <laughs> Saved by the reroll. Yep. Because <laughs> that definitely would have been someone saw you. Captain, uh, do you uh, see that meteor? I am detecting 24th century technology from uh, emanating from that. Fortunately, I can't be any more specific at this range, but it could be our Romulan. Uh, what? And does he, you point it out? I failed the roll, so. Yeah. <laughs> He'll try very uh, hard to, like, point it out, but <laughs> accurately, but. What can you do? <laughs> can you get a bearing on where it's heading? I'll try now, sir. 
Uh, this will be Reason Con, difficulty of two. Can I assist with that? <laughs> um, probably not. It's still complication range of uh, uh normal comp. Uh you know what? No, you're using your tricorder comp too. Uh can I provide like a little cover for him? Uh yeah, sure. Uh that'll remove the complication. Um, okay, and I'd like to spin the three momentum to roll four dice. That uh, yes. <laughs> Termination. Don't think any of my values would apply here. I also give this success a cost too. If you'd like. Um sure. Uh, the readings are not terribly exact, Captain, but uh, the 24th second, uh, century technology, which I detected, appears to now be on the ground and appears to be about 30 miles north of uh, where we are at present. Perhaps we could secure some transportation there. Perhaps. Hopefully these... Uniforms might help the military vehicle of some sort. Indeed. I believe if we pose as army intelligence, we may be able to get a closer look. Right. Um, cover story? Uh, what? We have reason to believe there could be spies in the area? Sounds like a good cover story to me, sir. Uh, how far away from the military base? Should should just be on the outskirts of town. The military base I did not get an exact location on. So I'm gonna say it's just on the outskirts. Uh, did you guys hear my last thing? Don't think so. I did not. Uh, the question was about the military base, right? Yes. Uh, the, since I didn't look up an exact location, I'll just say the military base is uh, on the outskirts of the town.
Um, so I guess we'll uh, take a walk then. <laughs> Does there look like to be any buses that might head towards the airfield for transporting uh, army personnel to and from the town? Uh, the, the town's not very big. You could basically walk to the other side in a few minutes. Uh, before we uh, walk over, I'd like to find like a public washroom or something to change into the uh, uniform. Uh, there's a small diner that has one that you could probably use. Uh, so did everyone get a military uniform? I think it was just three of us. I got a freaking auto mechanic uniform. Uh, I got a general 1940s suit hat. You're from the CIA. It's okay. Yeah, you guys are from the CIA. <laughs> Sounds good to me. I'm from Casey's from Army Intelligence. Um, what's uh, Praxis and uh, it'd be Army Intelligence, but probably lower rank. Don't worry, Casey won't bask in it. <laughs> um, likewise, probably. Like secretaries, or kind of like writers, typists. That, or maybe a computer, because uh, in the late forties, it was uh, that was still when computers were actually people, and most of them were women. Good point. <laughs> the captain could be the driver. Uh, she might have a better con score than Casey. <laughs> if we do get a vehicle. But appearance-wise, you would be driving. Just saying. I have no idea if women were drivers in the Army Corps. Uh, yeah, so probably changed into appropriate Army attire. And I think once everyone is like kind of in the appropriate attire, I guess we head to. Uh, I would honestly say like only a, two of us should go, two or three should go to the army base. Um, the rest stay kind of behind, just to get to the like a vehicle, like a jeep or something that can hold all of us. All right, so who's going? Uh, Casey, I assume, because he's the one pretending to be the officer. Um, I will go along to smooth talk in case Casey gets into trouble. <laughs> That's okay. Casey can just fight them all. Tiger army base. <laughs> uh, I don't think Degrasse should go, since plain clothes might attract some attention. So yeah, to the motor pool. On the army base. Right, uh, 
So, Captain and Casey, you guys walk up to the army base. Uh, you're met by a few enlisted guards. Uh, Captain, sir, what can I do for you? <clears throat> uh, good day, airman. He'll return the salute. Uh, I've Captain Casey from Army Intelligence. I'm looking to sign out a, a jeep from the motor pool. Uh, yes, sir. I'm sure they'll be able to to uh, take care of that request for you, sir. But I just need to see your identifications before I let you on the base, sir. Uh, I assume an ID came with like my fake uniform. Uh, someone did say to get identification. All right, you'll uh, pull out a fake army intelligence ID. <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Do we get to use that complication? Uh, don't, don't worry, sir. Uh, Army Intelligence, I'll, I'll get it for you, sir. I'll be out right away. And one of them runs off the motor pool. They get an advantage for also having a letter. <laughs> Very official army intelligence letter. Oh, they like they're willing to serve you hand and foot at this point. <laughs> uh, a couple of minutes later, um, a guy pulls up with with the jeep. Uh, mounted on it is a is a a machine gun of the time. Here you are, sir. I got you the best one we have. Thank you, Airman. Um, uh, is um, that weapon necessary? Um, your uh, intelligence, ma'am. Um, I thought it might be prudent for extra protection. Um. Sure. Just kind of looks at Casey like it's a little plastic. But... Uh, thank you, Ermin. I learned how to use one of those in the war. I'm sure it'll come back if it's truly necessary. And uh, he'll step out of the He'll salute and then uh, hand you the keys. Return the salute and take them. <laughs> and I'll step back and let you, you know, get in. Parks gets in, she gives us the salute, sitting down. As we hopefully drive off. Uh, Casey, give me a Control or Daring Con, difficulty two. Uh, let's make the complication range two, though. Uh, okay. Um... How am I going to do this? Um, I'll do, I guess, three threat for four dice. Uh, yep, uh, you get into the vehicle, uh, it's, you know, it's a little similar to the last ve vehicle you drove from the 60s, you know, a little different, you know, a little bit more rudimentary. Not a lot of features, um, but you punch the gas of the Jeep and, uh, you know, it kind of digs in the dirt a little bit before finally taking off into the town. So I guess we'll go pick up uh, our friends from the CIA. 
And you head back to the location where uh, the other three are waiting. Wow. Move over the Jeep. Making no one of all Earth technology. Uh, how did you all get this piece of equipment? Figueras is looking over the machine gun. Apparently, Casey here is a very persuasive individual. The grass cocks his eyebrow. Uh, I guess all those times in the hollow deck in the World War II simulations paid off for making a convincing Air Force officer. Yeah, looks so. Looking at this, you may be the only one uh, qualified to use it. I suppose we should uh, head out immediately and find out what we can before the area is truly locked down. Yes, and before it attracts unwanted attention. All right, please so start heading off. Uh, yep. All right, uh, Captain, I, I assume you're navigating here? I will do my best. All right, give me a reason con difficulty one to uh, be able to read the map that you found in the vehicle to uh, successfully tell Casey where to go. Uh, take a threat. A moment to that number one and eleven. And you find that there's not many highways leading to and from uh, the north part of town. It's basically a single road. Shouldn't be too hard to follow. Just head that way. Understood, sir. And you uh, start heading toward the north, toward the uh, the technology reading. Uh, we'll go ahead and go into a new scene. And as you are driving along. Uh, Casey, you start noticing that the engine is starting to um, hesitate a little bit. Uh, look at the fuel gauge again. <laughs> the fuel is uh, is full. You know, a little less than full now, but you know, basically you have full tank gas. Um, is the how hot is it? It's hot. <laughs> how far do we have to go? Yeah, you figure half. You're about halfway there. Is the engine overheating? Is some water or liquid? I'll pull over, I guess, and uh, 
crack the hood before the engine explodes. <laughs> uh, you pull the car over. Mendruck, are you familiar with any old uh, combustion engines? Not really, but I'm sure I can figure it out. Can't, can't be any more complicated than a one for Or one try. All right, give me a reason engineering difficulty one. Oh, some diagnostic. Uh, yes. No, take the momentum when I should die. Generate some more momentum, hopefully. Uh, yeah, you get three momentum out of that. Oh, okay. I will take out my muffin tool and uh, tighten the hoses back up. Right, let's go ahead and make this a control or daring engineering. Uh, I have threat. We'll make it a difficulty three. All right. As some of the some of the loose hoses are a little bit difficult to get to. All right. And you say control or hearing? Yes. Control right. three. All right. I will. Um. Yep. There is definitely momentum. Um. Let's see, I will take um two. Oh, I. If I use all three, that gives me two dice, right? Correct. All right, I'll do that. I'll roll four. Because I don't think I have a symbol focus, but I do have cautious engineering, so if need me. So I can re-roll one of those with cautious, right? Correct. There we go. Get a momentum back. Man, you guys are critting like crazy today. All right. Well, I believe we're all ready, Captain. I've secured the loose hoses, and she should be good to go. I'm quite not here. Well, hopefully we'll get the rest of the way.
right and then um you know probably probably uh you know maybe a half hour 45 minutes after this uh you guys um probably find yourself within a few thousand kilometer or a uh, a uh, few thousand meters of the uh, technology readings. I guess we could rescan for them. Or do we know exactly where they are now? I'll give you a roll. Someone good at scanning one. <laughs> uh, so whoever wants to try to pinpoint the location will be reason plus science difficulty two. Uh, will you take a focus in sensor operations? Sure would. Okay. You done? Uh, you have a higher science score than I do, but I have a focus. So, what do you think? Uh, I can assist on this if you want. Okay. Uh, probably wouldn't be able to assist because it's a individual tricorder. Or, no, no, um, you can assist because uh, triangulation and such. That's okay. a thing. That's a thing that exists. <sighs> Oof. <sighs> no worries. Um, so how does, uh, how does that work for an assist? Uh, basically, I get two complications currently. Okay. <clears throat> Can we buy both of them off? Okay, <laughs> never mind. Hey, I think the... I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna take one as threat. Just broke the tricorder. <laughs> <laughs> <Drop>. Snapped <laughs> in half. <laughs> so I'm gonna take one as threat, and then I'm gonna use one. So, Lieutenant, fun. You're seeing the same thing that I am. Uh, looks like the technology is located about 1,000, maybe 1,500 meters uh, to the northeast of our location. Yes, uh, that's the same ratings as I'm getting, Commander. I'll uh, follow your directions. Um, I assume like we're in like an army jeep. We could off road a bit. <laughs> yeah. Now you guys wish you had that. Uh. Uh, whatever the hell it was, the Argo or whatever. Oh, yeah, from uh, the Argo Nemesis. buggy. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, Casey, I'm going to make this a daring con difficulty three, complication two. 
as the path that you would that you're directed to take is a you know little difficult, moderately difficult, I should say. Uh, would you accept the determination spend on tough it out because he's just kind of taking it on like bad terrain? <laughs> Sure, because this is going to beat the hell out of you guys. <laughs> All right. So that's two successes. And I'll spend a momentum for... Er, there'll be a momentum and one threat for three dice. That's... Damn. No complication. I guess five successes. <laughs> All right, uh, Casey, you uh, you uh, hit the pavement pretty uh, expert or uh, pretty well. Um, you know, you guys aren't thrown around too badly. Um, you know, nothing that'll hurt you guys or make you guys worn out or anything. Uh, so you probably get to within. I'd say you probably put the vehicle about a hundred meters from the technology. You know, thinking that this, you know, this is probably a good place. You could probably uh, try to sneak up from here. Um, so do I see it? Uh, not yet. You're still, like, you're probably, like, behind a little ridge. You know, like, a little rock formation is probably where you pull behind. Is there a pair of binoculars by any chance in the glove? Gonna... I'll tell you what, give me a, uh, give me an insight security. Or you can pay the two momentum. Uh... I'll let you. I'll let you roll for that advantage, or you get spend it for it. I'll. Uh, I'll roll for it. Um, can I use observation for a focus? Is in like noticing that there's. Uh, no. All right. Uh, what's the difficulty? Uh, two. Okay. Um, I'll uh, give you a threat. Three dice. Uh, yep, you find some. A brand new pair. I'll, uh, guess I'll grab the binoculars and guess we, uh, want to check out the ridge. <laughs> Alright, so you, so the way I see you doing this, you're probably going to climb the little rock outcropping and try to look toward where it's at. At least that's how I'm seeing it. Correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me if you if you're not doing that. Uh, that's what I want to do. Uh, what's everyone else doing? <laughs> Going to follow, but uh, Captain's taking her shoes off. Uh, so we're following Casey to the ridge. I don't know if he'd be following you because you guys have like the tricorder. I guess he just has the binoculars. Mm, that's a good point. Uh, yeah, I'll lead the way with the uh, tricorder and try not to die of heat stroke in the desert. All right. Um, so, Casey, you climb the ridge and, uh, you know, like the little rock outcropping, and it kind of makes a little bit of maybe a maybe a 10 meter little dip into like a little, you know, not really a valley, but kind of, you know, like a ditch, so to speak, like a wide ditch. Um, and there you see the crash. You could definitely make out the crash shuttle. Uh, you can definitely tell that it's Romulan. It is, as far as you can tell, the exact same one you've seen in the, in the barn. Uh, do I see a Romulan <laughs> through my binoculars? 
give me uh, this will probably be insight security. Um, I'll make this a difficulty three um, observation for a focus. Okay. Um, and uh, while I'm looking, uh, uh, I don't know if this is like adding on to what I'm doing too much, but just I guess he'd also be looking to see if like any army people have showed up. Uh, that would be included, yes. Okay. Um, I'll do. Um, a threat and two momentum for four dice. That was a comp range of one still, right? Yes. You get three momentum out of that. All right. Um, near the shuttle, um, you do make out the Romulan. Um, and he seems to be yelling at somebody. You pan to see who he's yelling at, and you see a person wielding a shotgun. Um, you know, kind of like in like in like farmers' overalls, um, yelling back at at the Romulan with his shotgun. They both have their weapons drawn. Uh, Captain, there appears to be some sort of. Uh, conflict occurring between a local and uh, the Romulan. Shall we intervene? Seems like a good idea. Commander Gross, see if you can't find additional cover and cover us. Uh, understood, Captain. And yes, uh, phasers to stun. Let's not fire just yet. Whenever you're ready, Captain. How far away are they, did you say? Uh, probably from the rock outcropping, maybe 90, 80, like 80 to 90 meters. Somewhere around that. I guess you could just jog over. Is there like a path down into this? Uh, so the green circle will be the Romulan, basically. Uh, that will be the farmer, the shuttle, the ridge you climbed on, another ridge a little bit closer, and a little pathway. Uh, so since the captain asked me to find some cover, to cover them, uh, DeGrasse will go over to uh, the ridge on the left. Uh, Nidan, Mendrock, uh, keep an eye on uh, the Jeep and look out for any other additional, like, right, actual period piece army individuals. Aye, Captain. DC, after you. Uh, he'll uh, start jogging toward the uh the Romulan then. Okay, so uh, what are you guys doing? Uh, Casey and I will be heading towards the two to try and 
defuse the situation without firing a weapon. Hopefully. But All right, so you guys probably get within, you know, 50 meters or so. Probably definitely close enough to start yell, you know, yelling, shouting, whatever. Are they both pointing weapons at each other? Definitely, yes. Um, you could understand the Romulan, um, but the person cannot understand the Romulan. So he's getting very agitated. You know, the farmer's saying, like, you know, things like, get off my property, uh, you know, stuff like that. And what is the Romulan saying? Uh, basically, like, leave this place or I will vaporize you. Uh... Yep, yeah, no way around this. Um... Minor to draw phaser, uh, type one phaser, and shoot the Romulan from this range. All right, uh, so it'll be 50 meters. I'll probably say it's long. Okay, so diff three. Yep. Uh, so much for diffused attention. Yeah, um, so... I had, I had threat that I spent earlier. <laughs> yeah, um, I will give you threat and I'm going to spend three momentum. Or no, uh, two momentum. Only four. Okay, um, spending determination on by reason or by force? Uh, yep. Damn, you couldn't roll enough three complications for me. Uh, yeah, get uh, one momentum and then uh, damage. That's five. Um, should have charged, but that would have been a momentum cost. At the last second, um, he notices your phaser blast, and uh, he moves out of the way, so you you hit him a little bit, um, but he's still able to stand, and uh, it looks like he's gonna return fire. Uh, and I paid I paid to avoid it. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, to momentum to keep, and it's your go, Casey. Okay. Uh, minor action, I guess, as well to draw. Mm hmm And uh. I guess I don't have a type one phaser on here. It's just uh one less than a type two, right? Uh it's three, it's charged in a the hidden uh hidden quality of one, uh, but it's two challenge dice plus your um security. Okay. Um And the shot is a difficulty two from this range? Uh three, it's uh long. Okay. Um hand phasers for focus? Yes. Um, 
uh, take a threat. Damage, please. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Casey's high. deadly with yeah, Casey's deadly with everything. Um the second shot that hits him hits him square and true straight in the chest. Um and you could definitely tell that uh he took a lethal injury here. Uh, he's not dead yet, so you have the opportunity, but uh, he's in bad shape. Uh, Casey's going to turn to the farmer and say, Captain Casey, military intelligence. Uncle Sam wants you to go home and never speak of this. Give me presence command. Um... I'll make this a difficulty. Difficulty three. All right. Uh, I'll generate four threat for five dice. So I think it would be hilarious if I succeed in this. <laughs> uh, you you had momentum, right? Uh, did we? Or you give me six threat? Is how many, six, dice, how uh, many dice you want? Five. Yeah, that is six threat. You're right. I really gained the momentum at least. <laughs> uh, so the the farmer seeing um two lasers shoot out of, out of your hands, basically shooting out of your hands. Um, you could tell that he's basically shaking and in fright. Um, with your ordering him to leave and never speak of this, he just drops his shotgun and book it and books it away from the the situation. I think probably could handle that uh, slightly different. Sorry, Captain. Let's check on our Romulan friend here and he kind of motions to the ridge for the grass to come down. And uh, the grass does so. Uh, so I'm gonna yeah try to do first aid and stabilize the Romulan. All right, since I have all this threat now, um... we're looking for keeping an eye out for actual military and for any um you know other trouble. All right, uh. Um... I'll spend a lot of threat here, Casey. Um, this will be a difficulty two complication range of three to stabilize. Okay. Um, uh, daring medicine, I believe. Okay. Uh, focus in emergency medicine, I assume. <laughs> um, I'll spend one... Uh, momentum and two threat per um, four dice. Uh, how much threat? Two. Wow, that was really bad. 18, 17, 19. Have any rerolls? Uh, and the eighteen should have been a comp. Oh, 
comp two. And the nineteen should have been a comp. It was a comp three. <clears throat> so you technically have two complications here also. Uh, do I sacrifice my favorite value? <laughs> uh, what about your save milestone from last week? I don't know if I got a milestone uh, last I week. Can't, I can't, well, can't what's, do. what's the grass's superpower uh, as a XO? Uh, it's three momentum for determination. Which we've never really had hardly that much. So, and the only way to give him the determination spend is to ability after he spends it. So. Wait, so, so if I've spent my determination already. Right, but when you do the roll, when you do a determination spend, and if there's three momentum on the table, then DeGrasse could say like, "Hey, have your determination back and spend." Momentum and get your determination. Oh, I see. Okay, I didn't know about that. It's the captain that can just give them their determination, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. And I spent mine. We got company coming. No theory here, holes. Commanders, uh, take care of this. I will. Who's coming? Just get him out of out of sight. Maybe ten minutes according to my track corner. Um, got ten minutes. Time to hide the track corner. Can I reverse or I? Uh, um. What am I saying? Okay, can I challenge the value no plan survives enemy contact because this basically went to plan? Um, how are you challenging it? Like, it, like what we just did went to like plan? Like going uh, um, Sure. Alright, determination back. <laughs> If I roll this again, I'm going to cry. Much better. Well, at least I didn't sacrifice my favorite value in bait. <laughs> All right, uh, you're able to stabilize the Romulan. Give him a quick first stage, a couple passes. You know, with, with some bandages and such. Uh, I want to, like, carry him in to the back of the Jeep and just, like, put him there, cover him in a blanket. <laughs> He's still unconscious, right? Yes. Okay. Could disarm him. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Grab his uh, weapon. I'll also grab the shotgun as well. Okay. And then if DeGrasse has an open hand after grabbing those weapons, he'll tap his comm badge. Uh, Captain... Uh, Casey was able to successfully stabilize the Romulan. However, we can probably hide the individual. I don't think we'll be able to hide his ship in time. No, just make sure all usable equipment has been destroyed. Um, I'll have send Mendruck and um, Don to assist with that. Understood. Nidon and Mendrock, uh, head over to the crash site. Make sure that there are no usable technology there. Vaporize it if you have to with the phasers. Aye, Captain. Uh, 
Um, to your question, um, yes, you are. Um, yeah, no, Don, um, yeah, you are far enough away from anything that if you had to do that, you're fine. And I think that's kind of what the captain was wanting you guys to do anyway. Perfect. All right. Um, I will head on over to the shuttle and. Um, but let me confirm that, um, Captain, you basically want them to self-destruct the shuttle again, right? Um, is it in pieces or is it like fully intact? I thought it was in pieces. At least that was my mental idea. I don't think we got a... Um, like there's some hull breaches and such. Yes. Um, you know, there's debris scattered around. Um, how big is the, is the blast rate is going to be then? Um, you could probably set a controlled destruction. Uh, that works. That's whatever would destroy all the tech on board, the unusable state. So, uh, my idea is just to when they arrive, because it's going to take time, like to buy them a little bit of time and to whatever, whoever comes. All right, so I think this is how I'm going to set it up. Um, the army group is going to be here in six intervals. Um, to successfully set up the self-destruct to where, you know, it's basically a controlled blast, so you're not taking out half of the, half of the state. Um, it's going to be a difficulty four. Um, I'm going to call this daring engineering work 18 resistance 1 magnitude 4. Mendrock, do you want to lead and I'll assist? Yeah, I have uh, some talents that will help decrease some of this. Or speed it up anyway. So, Gary plus engineering. Have you spent sorry. Your, sorry, Mendrick, have you spent your determination yet? No, I haven't. Uh, you may want to just to ensure the success of the first roll. Yeah. Um, Can you do that? Because I believe you also have meticulous, which actually increases the intervals, if I'm not mistaken. By one. Like yeah, I have uh in nick of time uh meticulous. Yeah, it um, it increases so instead of taking two, it's three intervals to do one task for you because of the meticulous talent. Mm, okay. So I'll spend the uh, momentum and uh, I'll spend my determination as well. Um, how many momentum did you have? We just have one. Ooh. He has to give you a threat. You have, okay. You take a yeah. threat. Yep. Yeah. That. 
Oh, I'm hitting what? Four dice? Uh, you'll roll three, but you have the... Uh, but I have the determination. Yeah, but you'll have the one dice that already rolled the two. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had you. And, uh, what is this for? Uh, it's basically to set the self-destruct on the Romulan shuttle. Oh, okay, so computers is the focus? Um... You know, probably yes. All right. All right, you get a momentum out of that. I can um, then all the one, right? With cautious. Yep. And then Nadon and DeGrasse can assist in this. Re rolls to a critical. <laughs> That's why I'm the engineer. So you've got eight successes from my count? Uh, go ahead and roll the uh, seven challenge dice, Mendrock. Oh, don't forget, uh, DeGrasse, you have coordinated efforts, too. I do. Yeah, I was just looking up the exact effect. Uh, it's either piercing or uh, extra work. Yep. I'm guessing meticulous is in the uh, ops book. Uh, yes, yeah. and that's an extra breakthrough. I also have in the nick of time too. Uh, yeah. Oh, miracle worker is an extra yeah. breakthrough. Yeah. Yeah. Meticulous is it, it's going to use an extra interval. That's what I'm trying to figure out. It's meticulous. I don't think I've ever seen that one yet. Uh, it's in the operations book. I posted it in um, Discord. Mm -hmm. I need to put all the definitions in my sheet so I don't have to look them up. Essentially, you can negate one complication generated from the role. However, during the time, uh, time task or challenges, it takes one more interval for him to complete a task. All right, so this actually takes three. Okay. All right, so uh, two, four, six, eight, nine work, and then um, is that counting the coordinated effort? No, it's not because he has nick of time. Um, we have to subtract one for resistance, so that's eight. Yep. Um, and then what are all these bloody bonuses do? Uh, I've already uh, counted nick of time. What was the other one? Coordinated well, efforts, which he gets yeah. to pick either um, piercing or extra work. Yep, I'll take uh, extra work for this one. And that's per effect, right? Yes. Yes. All so, right, so I believe that'll be 11. Yes. Okay. And give me some end a momentum. Miracle work here. Mark workers in the operations, but uh, as long as there's one breakthrough, one as, as long as there's one challenge dice, there's one additional uh, one effect on a challenge dice. You get a breakthrough, second breakthrough. Oh, cool. All right, so uh, that'll be, yeah, two breakthroughs. So uh, this will be uh, so it should be difficulty two, work seven, resistance one, magnitude two, uh, three intervals left. I believe uh, I believe that checks out. Uh, that's what I got. Roll again, Mendrock. Yeah. 
Yep. All right. And there's uh, momentum. All right. So. You wish to spend one. It is difficulty two. And you have two yeah. assists. So I'll spend one. That's really nice. Well, I can get all that with complication. Just need the assist from Nadan as well, and Mendrox reroll. Dear God. Uh, gain four momentum out of that. Uh, go ahead and roll me the seven challenge dice, Mendrock. Yep, uh, currently eight. What's the complete to work track anyway? So... Yep. All right. So, uh, oh, uh, where was Casey and the Romulan during all this? Just so I kind of know where everybody's at. I think uh, I was going to try and bring him back to like the. Uh... The Jeep. Okay, uh, just give me a uh, give me a fitness security difficulty two. Okay. Um, take a threat. Uh, yep, you're able to get him up there. Uh, that float plus another momentum that there's a blanket or tarp that we could really just throw over him inside the uh, jeep. Uh, yep. And, um, t two momentum or a momentum for handcuffs. Yep. Is that one or two momentum? Uh, I'll give it one. Rax just kind of tosses the handcuffs to Casey. Hopefully that will secure him. Casey will handcuff him. And uh, just as uh, Casey is done covering um, the uh, Romulan in the Jeep, uh, two truckloads of soldiers come out, um, led by a colonel. And uh, he walks up to you, Prax. Report, Lieutenant. <clears throat> uh, Captain, the, or sorry, Colonel, there appears to be a crash site. Um, currently, uh, there is uh, a few other officers down there investigating, but uh, out east caution, sir, there's uh, it appears to be some sort of leak. Uh, leakage there, it, there might be an explosion um, happening. What kind of crash site? Um, unknown craft, sir. I've never seen it before in my entire life. Uh, the uh, the uh, troops got to fan out to, uh, you know, kind of surround your location. Sir, if you don't mind, uh, the captain here, he might want to go and ensure the safety of his men. He was just getting a couple things out of the Jeep. I assume, yeah, Casey would be walking back at that point. What's going on here, Captain? Uh, Casey will throw up a salute. Sir, uh, Captain Casey of Army Intelligence. It, yes, uh, as the uh, lieutenant said, it appears there's been uh, some sort of uh, unidentified craft has crashed here. Could potentially be Soviet. What are the Soviets doing here? <clears throat> uh, 
unknown, but as of now, there is far too little evidence to make any sort of conclusion. Take me to this site. I need to see it. Uh, sir, it may be uh, dangerous for your safety. It might be better if I go ahead. Uh, give me presence command. Uh, I think I'm going to make this opposed. Um, you know, spend three momentum for four days. I'll spend eight threat. Very well, Captain. I expect your report on my desk in the morning. And he motions to his troops to get back in the in the van. Uh, thank you, sir. Salute again. Uh, just as they start leaving, these three come running up. I'm just in time to hear the explosion behind them. Oh my God. Uh, are you, are you okay? Yes, sir. A little shaking. Crack motions to cut the, the sir talk. That yes, sir. I'm okay. That might draw that platoon of soldiers back. I don't think the colonel left. Like, as soon as they started driving away, uh, you did tell him there might be an explosion, so he knew. Okay, well. Wipe my brow. cheap. <laughs> Let's get out of here, though. Armor guess is gonna have a story to tell. But first let's um tap finds the combat shit on her and taps it. Um Prax to Commander Keith. Go ahead, Captain. <clears throat> What's the status of the timeline? It appears that uh, our timeline has been restored, Captain. Uh, that is wonderful news. We're going to vacate this area with our Romulan companion before we beam out. There are currently locals here that might see the transport. Let me know when you are in a secluded area, Captain, and we'll beam you out. We'll be in touch soon. Cracks out. Well, that was fun. Let's go find a secluded place to beam out. Uh, understood, sir. 
You're right. That could have gone a lot worse. Yeah, cool. I think we could finish it, this one up then. <clears throat> I just wanted to make sure. Crack stops into the Jeep, make sure the Romulan is still comfortably sleeping. Uh, he is. You can still give him a punch to the jaw for good measure. Yeah, more back in the future. <laughs> um. So wait, we've been transported back now. Well, I was just waiting to. I was waiting for the call back. Um. I guess we all hop in the Jeep and ride off to some place uh, secluded and then you know, beam back to the future. With our Romulan friend in tow. And uh, you are met on the transporter pad um, uh, by Captain Keith and a few armed guards. To uh, move to apprehend the uh, the Romulan. Well, Commander Keith, hopefully the timeline didn't deviate too much. Though there was a little discrepancy, or will be discrepancy in the papers. Uh, what kind of discrepancy, Captain? Well, I believe the Roswell crash was supposed to happen weeks before that. Am I correct in assuming that, Commander Gross? I'm um, sorry, sir. What was that? The the crash on at Roswell, New Mexico was supposed to be prior to July eighth, and the paper was printed July eighth. Uh, correct. Based on my reading, uh, the crash happened a few weeks, and then the debris was discovered by a a rancher or a farmer, um, and then it was reported soon after that. Whatever the discrepancy in the timeline, it seems to not have affected the future too much. I'm reading a 97.3. Uh, how do how did they say that? Uh, returned in, to a uh, normalcy, Captain. <clears throat> Close enough. I'm sure. Sure, no one will notice too much. I guess the real question now is why. Is there a chance uh, I could we could be there when he wakes up and in proper custody? Or is it best we never know, Commander Keith? This version of the Romulan agent is going to be held here in the 
28th century for trial. There is, however, the question of the Romulan agent that started all of this from your universe. Right. Let me guess. We have to go stop him. If only it were that simple, Captain. Stopping him outright will cause several other universes to cease existing. See, um, is of course will require a delicate hand. I'm assuming our universe is not intact. After the event, uh, no, but we could send you back right before the event, perhaps a few hours to try to prevent it. Perhaps. We would ask that you take care in uh, stopping the the, the cadastri on your end, Captain. Like I said, if you stop it outright, several other universes will be affected. But I understand if you have to make the choice to prevent the destruction of your own. Very well. Um, give us whatever available data you have on the, the matter. Let's start planning accordingly. Unfortunately, we don't have much data from around the flashpoint of the event. There was just way too much interference to get a clear reading on how or why this happened. Best we can tell is the Romulan may have gotten close to what we assume was the flashpoint, which originated, originated around Seoul more specifically at the sun there was a chrono mass ejection at that point in time it is possible that the romulan did something around that time to cause all this Is there a way, um, just moments before we destroyed his vessel, if you could transport um, one of like the computer terminals from his vessel, um, the data module?
unfortunately, we could not captain. Will there be a way to question uh, the Romulan? Will I have the opportunity to question him? I'm sure that can be arranged. Thank you, Commander. In the meantime, you should get yourself something to eat and maybe find a, find a place to get a little rest. I'll let you know when the Romulan is able to talk. Thank you, Commander. I'm sure we're all a little tired from our jumping around in time. And he'll nod and walk out, leaving you guys in the transport room. Well, it seems we're going to be stuck here for a little while longer. Well, might give Mendrock the opportunity to casually observe some of their technology. I doubt they'll let you get too close to it. Right, Lieutenant? I think the recently promoted lieutenant might be already uh, hard at work observing what he can. Well, hopefully they still have replicators in this time period. Let's find something to eat and maybe a change of clothing again. Yeah, and a shower might be nice after trudging through the desert for most of the day. Indeed. And uh, I think with that, I'm out of ideas, so. Yep, I think uh, it's probably a good place to call it uh, since a uh, few people have to jump off early. Uh, so we'll call that the end of part two. <laughs>